Welcome to the Mobile Money Nation. My name is AJ and today I'm going to talk about how you can exercise your money. For many people, the only physical activity they may have is actually their job. So if you're not working, of course, you're not making money. You're not being as active. And for many others, if you're working from home now, you're probably being even less active just because you don't have to leave your house. Now, there are others who are active no matter if it's related to their job or if it's in addition to their job by you know, specifically going to a gym to exercise or maybe participating in a sport league. Uh, that's something that they like to do because they like to exercise, they like to stay in shape, they like to be fit. So what happens when you're not active? Now, when you're not active, as far as your muscles, your muscles may atrophy, they'll lose power, they'll lose muscle mass, and you're not able to do a lot of the things that you were able to do that you were able to do when you're younger or maybe when you're more consistently exercising. Well, just like humans, money can be stagnant and it can lose strength as well. Except for with money, the loss of strength also called loss of purchasing power is known as inflation. And over time, if your money is not doing anything to grow or to stay strong, inflation will degrade the value of your money. And then a year, two, five, 10 years from now, if you haven't consistently been exercising your money or consistently working your money, then the dollars that you own, that you've saved, won't have as much value as they did when you first put them in your bank account. And if you really think about it, money really has no value if it doesn't have any movement. You could sit $100 on your desk. If you don't do anything with that $100, then it essentially has no value. You have to actually use it by either spending it to buy an asset or to buy food or to buy a home or to invest it in something or to use it to purchase a service for it to then actually have value for you. And so money in your pocket or sitting at your home, it just has the potential to do something else in the future. But not only that, you could also use that money to purchase something that loses value immediately. Like when you buy food, although that is something you need, you need to eat, of course, but as soon as you eat it, most of the value, that the potential value that you would have gotten from the food, you've already gotten it and you can't create more value after you've eaten the food. Now, what you can do is, of course, the food gives you strength. You'll be able to exercise. You'll be able to work. You'll be able to do other things that could create more value, but that food itself is gone. It no longer has any value once you've digested it and until your next meal once you're hungry again. And while you can't directly eat your money, it also can't keep you warm at night. And if you were to burn the money in order to keep yourself warm, then of course that money has lost its value and you can't do anything else with it in the future. But when you actually do use it, whether it's to exchange for a good or a service or to invest it or save it and get some type of return on your savings, a dollar actually has an infinite usage. Now, when you put in your savings account, it can gain money there. You can then take the money out of your savings account. You can invest it in a property. You can invest it in an equity like the stock market or, the, or a bond. Or you could literally pass it back and forth between you and another person that has an item that you want. So if, let's say you have an apple, someone has an orange, you want to buy the orange from them, you give them the dollar, they give you the orange, and then they're like, hey, I really like your apple. They give you the dollar back to buy the apple and you give them the apple. This exchange can go on literally infinitely as long as someone has something that you want and you have something that they want and that they're willing to give you money for. And because it has infinite usage and it's not a human being, of course, it's not a living being, it actually never gets tired. And so you can use that dollar and you can work it 24 seven. Your dollar will never get tired. It will never have to take a lunch break. It will never complain about too much work. And in fact, if you treat your money right, it will bring more dollars back to you that you can then also put to work just like your original dollar or a hundred or a thousand dollars that you used to gain more money. On the other hand, you personally will get tired if you were to work a second or third job, depending on what that job is, especially if you have a physically stressful job, but also if you have a mentally stressful job as well. But there's only a certain amount of hours in a day that you can actually work and function for a long term. There's no way that you're going to be able to work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and be able to function properly at whatever your job actually is. And so at minimum, you're probably going to need at least four to six hours of sleep. Some people survive off four hours of sleep. Most people probably should get around eight hours of sleep, but most people are usually in that maybe six to eight hour range of sleep every night. And so while you're sleeping, your money could actually be working 
if you give it a job. And not only that, but while you can't be in more than one place at a time, your money actually can. So you can have your money do multiple jobs or you can have your money doing multiple exercises and staying physically fit by investing in different asset classes or putting your money into different asset vehicles in order to bring back more money for you.